What the fuck is that? As if I needed an extra fucking player. Traps? <laughs> you bring traps? Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck me. Three players and healer, but you still need traps. Nice traps. Uh, nice aimbot, cheater. Aimbot? Man, what the fuck are you talking about, man? You bring traps. Hello everyone, and welcome to one of the best builds that I've ever made. A build that isn't mine, from the beginning anyway. Shouts to Lamalasi for coming up with the build idea. Although many of us did make similar builds at some point in the past. But sometimes all it takes is one more piece to add to the puzzle, which makes what may have been a drug build, or a little idea, a troll build, an aim training build, as 
the mod made it for into an actual solid versatile build that it could be used in almost every dark zone situation the dark zone build i'm a dark zone player this is not a pve build yes you can use it in conflict but ideally it's not to be used there get to the dark zone if you want to play pvp having four guys on your team against four guys on a shitty map with shitty rules is not good pvp so the dark zone it is dark zone is the ultimate challenge because as a single solo player you are going to be going up against multiple players. I'm always outnumbered. And I'm never outmatched. When I'm outmatched, I go back to Discord. Yo, boys, get on. Got a good server here. And then we tackle shit as a team. And yes, this build is very good in a team, as it is solo. But it is one of the best builds to use solo, providing your aim is somewhat decent. Because, like you can see in the title, it is a headshot build with hazard protection. So your damage output isn't going, to, isn't going to be good to the body. In fact, it's going to be abysmal to the body. But the big horn is just that. A headshot weapon. So, let's take a quick look at the scenery. Where we are. The edge of the map. Mountains in the distance. There is a out of map spot on Coney Island. It was released about a month and a half ago. I thought I'd come here for a build video because... Why not give you some good scenery? Anyway, you aren't here for scenery. You're here to find out how I build it, why I build it the way I can, any other ways you may build it, and yeah, everything to do with this masterpiece of a build. So after fighting Lamau in 1v1s, I discovered that this weird build that I saw him running in the past was actually very, very good. Better than maybe he anticipated, and me, and anyone else. Uh, we've been doing a lot of 1v1s recently, and this build consistently came out on top. Now, what do you lose compared to a classic 1v1 build? Now, let's look at a classic 1v1 build real quick to, as a comparison. Um, some people run Concussion instead of Adrenaline Rush, but Perfect Adrenaline Rush is just, it's too good. And for a tank build, it's the perfect companion. So this is what people would normally use in a 1v1. Um, it's what they expect you to use with concussion probably instead of adrenaline rush. Uh, Fox's contractor. Now what is wrong with Fox as a contractor? You're sacrificing a Brancet bonus and an attribute for this oh so great multiplicative damage. And there's no space to put hazard protection because if you take off the headshot damage, the amount of damage this actually provides is, well, less. I go for weapon handling on mine, a lot of people go for crit chance. But this was losing to this a build like this that didn't even have all the right rollers in the right places the Mao had like weapon handling and hazard and armor regen and headshot and armor regen and hazard and like it was all over the place like i said it was a troll build but it has become a masterpiece i spent a lot of time using this build trying it with friends against friends with and against all the different types of builds and i've settled with this as version uh well main version so that is 210 base headshot damage minus the 100 that you get from the full proc. If you have the full proc on the big corner, it's 50 stacks of 2%, you get 310%. That is a lot of headshot damage. That is not to be ignored. Then on our defensive stats where things get really interesting, 55.5k armor regen and 60 hazard protection. 60 hazard protection, you might be thinking, well, it's not enough, right? You need more like 70, 80. Sure. That's true in most cases, but I was trying to find a good balance between damage and hazard protection and armor regen. This is to me the finest balance that you can get. Now there is one piece to the puzzle that's missing, but I think that's better left for a different version of the build. The hardest hitting build, you want this. Well, technically speaking, you want perfect to uh, intimidate, but I'll get to that in a second. So you want armor regen. How do you go about getting armor regen? Bellstone Armory is the first piece you look at. One piece gives you 1% armor regen and two attributes to play around with, all of which are going to be hazard and headshot damage. Of course, a blue core. It's a six blue build. Everything's blue, right? The next piece you look at is another single piece which gives you 1% armor regen. However, it comes at the cost of a fairly under par Brancet bonus, which only helps the duration of your sticky while it is on the ground prior to detonation. This can still be useful when you are running away from players and you need to get through a choke point. You can throw an EMP sticky on the choke, get around that corner, start medkitting without three seconds of space. 
and then stagger them and then of course you are you will get the medkit off they will be EMP'd or perhaps even still in a stagger animation and well then you have the advantage you have turned a losing situation into a winning situation that's the outplay potential that this build can have and this is where EMP sticky is best used it's the least cheesiest way to use it a lot of people use it with full crit damage 3-3 builds and you know one magu yeah that's a way to play the game but it's also a very easy way to play the game use it more as a defensive tool rather than an offensive one the only time you're going to be using your EMP sticky as an offensive tool is against a big shield of course this is a headshot damage build you are going to run into big shield and they will cause you a problem in which case you're going to want to EMP stack them or shoulder swap in their face now you do get the 1% armor regen as part of the attribute leaving you one attribute spare what do you go for well whether you have hazard armor regen or headshot damage they're all fine I like to start off with higher damage just by one roll but when I want to switch out to more hazard, if I hear a foam or if there's fire, um, if EMP sticky be getting me a lot, I'm going to switch this out for hazard. I have that one slot below due to my first build, my first class, being a placeholder. I put all the pieces that I like to switch to, the Murakami being one of them. So I go from my headshot to my armor regen. Put your, sorry, put your hazard on your second, on, on your slot here, so that when you're on your other build, the first piece that shows up is the hazard protection one. The next piece that shows up is my armor regen. So I can choose very quickly what it is that I want to switch to. I never ever run a build one way. I don't go, right, this is my build, that's what I'm using. Nah, never. I am always adapting my build in the fight. Not always through talent swap because I know that's controversial. A lot of people don't like it, they think it's a glitch or an exploit. That's fine, that's your opinion. I don't think it is. If you want to prove it so, please come with some logic. Explain why you think it is so. But that's a topic for another day. Let's continue with the build. Once you've got 2% armor regen, you need to get 3, right? So Golan is the obvious choice um, for the next points of armor regen. You could go with 3 Giller, but why get health rolls and, you know, base armor? It, it's not necessary. So you go for Golan. The status effects is rather useless. I mean, you get an extra, you know, 10% duration on the actual EMP effect. That is not the same as the skill duration from it on the floor. These are two separate things. So, yeah, not the greatest, but you really use it for the second piece Golan, which I advise one of which goes on your chest piece. Reason being is there is a named piece called Hunter Killer. That gives you 40% amplified damage while you have bonus armor. It's perfect to intimidate. You get that from doing your hunters in New York. If you haven't done that yet, make sure you do it or farm another character with a friend who has done his. When he picks up his keys in a base, he can get you a chest from the, you know, fr from his chest and then ch share it with you. That's how I got mine. I haven't actually done my New York hunters yet. I have three hunter killers, courtesy of some very, very generous friends. So, um your fifth piece you want to go for Fenris it is base weapon damage additive all brand set specific bonuses are additive weapon damage not multiplicative like they were in division one don't get it twisted so the more blues you have or the more the less reds you have the better or the more damage proportionally speaking that this actually adds to your total there's a thing called diminishing returns the more you have of any one particular stat each a roll that you add providing the roll is the same value you know 10 10 10 10 it gives you a less of your total damage 10 of 100 is larger than 10 of 200 have 210 headshot damage looking at your sixth piece now 15 percent headshot damage well it was 195 now it's 210 that 15 percent isn't really adding that much damage it's about seven and a half percent damage that's only to the head so even though it is the next best piece to put in for damage, it's not far off a walker. Now a walker is only 5% and half the value of a Fenris. But when you consider that the walker has a name piece called Matador, which goes in your backpack and it has got a perfect adrenaline rush, the very talent that you are using, you may want to opt for a blue hazard headshot Matador, if you have it. I don't, unfortunately. When I find walker in the DZ again, I will be farming for that because that will be the absolute best way to make this the tankiest build possible whilst also retaining good damage because while it's slightly less damage output to the head than a, than a prof even with full stacks of the, of the big horn um you know 5 versus 15 even with diminishing returns prof is still better for the head but the walker gives you 1% 1.2% armor regen um 
Wait, what? Walker gives armor regen? What? No. Let me explain to you. Adrenaline Rush gives you 10% bonus armor for 5 seconds, 3 stacks, so 30% armor for 5, for 5 seconds, over 10 seconds at 60%, divided by all those seconds, you get 6% a second of armor regen, providing you are getting 3 stacks and the enemies are depleting your armor, all of it, before you get the next stack. When you have perfect adrenaline rush, I quickly show you, you have 12% per enemy, 36, 72, 7.2% 7 armor regen, providing you are surrounded by players. And with a build like this, you're not always going to be able to kill players in time, so they will be bunching up. The more they bunch up, the more bonus armor you get, and the more stacks you get with your fireball shield. I give 13% damage, that's 12 because I'm not 6 blue. When I go back to my 6 blue piece, this goes up by 0.2% damage. You look at the shield, and you scroll down. Strike a shield, you get 0.2% damage per blue core. So when you do get 6 cores, you get 2%, which is why it goes up by 1. You're only actually gaining 0.2 from going from tier 5 to tier 6. So bear that in mind. And don't forget, with the firewall shield, you need to have the 5% mod on the bottom left, and the 1% mod on the top left. A 6% amplified damage additional to players who don't have that. Most of you people know about it, most of you have it, but if you're not aware, now you're aware. 13% with 6 blue. Bonus armor. Now you are starting to understand how stacking all these different types of blue bonus armor, adrenaline rush, intimidate, all of these things can be amazing. Even if you're a 6 blue build, switch to your chest piece, put that mod on. 40% amplified damage. 40%. I only would reuse that once my unbreakable has been procced. Now, of course, you, I, I'm a talent swapper. You know, I'm taking damage. I'm weak. I'm strafing. Get your strafe on, by the way. Here around the corner. I, I pop a make it. Go into my menu. I change to efficient. My efficient procs. You don't longer need efficient because efficient only works. Uh, only does its job when you need the make it to be procking. So once he's procked out, there's no point running efficient. You swap to intimidate. Now you've got, you know, a potential of 40% damage as long as you retain that bonus armor. You want to deal with the damage, you're going to want to whip out that shield, protect your body shot. But generally speaking, you want to use your medkit and trade without a shield. Make sure that they are using your medkit's regen. And right as your medkit runs out, then whip out your shield. Unless you have two or three guys coming through a doorway, in which case you definitely want to whip out your shield. Get that 24, 36% amplified damage. When it comes to hazard protection, I have 60%. People stop bringing out foam, fire, MP, bleed, things that annoy me. If it's foam and an awkward player, I'll stick on that. I'll drop 10 headshot damage, which is a very small amount of damage when you already have so much headshot because of diminishing returns. And then what I'll do is I'll quickly get around the corner and just put on my ensnare mod. Now the foam cannot touch me. And if they have skill tiers, it's not going to do me for long. However, they have a lot of skill tiers. I'm probably going to die, at which point I will respawn and I'll use my bleed race build. I say bleed race because I have it built with bleed mods, but you can change these to whatever status effect is getting you at that particular moment in time. Now, what is this version of the build? I have my perfect hunter killer on here, purely for the fact that I can get to it quickly, but what I'll do is I'll switch to this build, put the unbreakable back on, and if it's bleed that's getting me, I've traded my providence mask for a Yarl backpack and then put the Golan here on the mask. So I have all the same armor regen, the Fenris additive damage, and hazard protection, putting me up to 80% base hazard. With the two mods, I'm at 100% bleed. Bleed cannot touch me, they can't proc their sadist, and if they're not fighting anybody else, they cannot even proc their wicked. That is 40% damage. If you're solo against you know two or three players, two of which have bleed crit damage builds, they're gonna be melting you. But don't worry, switch to a higher hazard version, and you can kill them, because they won't have damage, they won't have unbreakable. You can easily face trade two guys, kill one, you're unbreakable procs, you can get around the corner, a minuscule armor, get around that corner, just keep strafing, keep strafing, practice your strafe. You are going to need to have a good strafe for this build, it's not a face tank build. Earlier I did an absolute mad play. Woo! 
I was strafing like a motherfucker. Came out on top. And I, th I believe I wasn't using this version. I was using the full armor regen version. Quick sneak peek of this one. This is hazard armor regen everywhere. This is ideal if you are not fighting status. But the thing is, everybody runs status. So really, just go with the hazard version. It will be your most reliable, safest version of the build. MP sticky, I've already gone through it. It's for big shield. However, if you're in a team, or if uh, players of high damage are killing you, well, MP sticky is probably not going to help you there. You may want to put a pulse on. But whenever you put a pulse on, never ever just put the pulse on. Look at the cooldown. 18.2 second cooldown. Not to mention it takes 2-3 seconds for it to even go on cooldown. And the duration is half that in PvP because everyone has 50% pulse res. So duration is 6.1 seconds and your cooldown is like 20. That's 14 seconds without skill. You are way better off. Whoever, and please drill it into your teammates if not yourself. Take off your mask. Make sure that your providence is on your mask because he's the least valuable piece in this build. Put the Night Watcher on. You will lose 25 headshot damage. But you will gain 100% scanner skill haste. Put your mod on. If you have additional headshot mods, good for you. Just have one on there at all times to save that. Now you have a cooldown of 9.1. I mean, it's more like 12 seconds. One, two, three. It takes about three seconds, two and a half seconds to go into cooldown and an additional nine for it to come back. So it's about 11 and a half, 12 second cooldown. Duration there will be seven seconds. So your Murakami actually comes into effect here when you have the pulse on. So you have a little more synergy. Of course, Gila gives you total armor, which again, isn't even bad. You lose a bit of damage, but you gain tankiness. 1.9 million. Now you have even more armor regen. Not a whole lot more, but you gained. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. I wouldn't complain about that. Please, guys, make this build. Give it a go. Practice your headshots. Stop aiming at body shots with shields. But stop aiming at shield with body shot. I got my shit backward. Please, elevate your gameplay. If you're not talent swapping, I will be making a video covering all the ins and outs so we can talk about that as a community and decide where we will stand on the issue. I don't know why it's an issue. Like strafing. People complain about strafing, but you have to strafe. People complain about talent swapping. You have to talent swap. The people who are swapping, even if they're not doing it in their menu on the medkit, and they're just going around a corner and doing this. Oh, I fancy creeping death. Oh, EMP sticky. I just EMP sticky four players. Then I can come off of it, go back to adrenaline rush. You can do that. But people don't think to play this game at a high level. Because it's a fairly casual game. But in any game, there's always going to be those tryhards. There's guys pushing the boundaries. Well, that's what I'm part of. Look where I am. <laughs> I pushed the boundary, didn't I? So, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching this build video. Give it a go. Thank you very much. Catch you in the next one.